Hey guys, I was wanting to create a video for you so I could give you some background knowledge on what you'll be learning about in the lesson as you go through the different modules and look at the different resources. I just wanted to give you a big picture overview. So with this lesson, we normally would be looking at what are the causes of the American Revolutionary War. And your goal would be to understand and experience both the anger and frustration that colonists felt over Britain's governing policy towards the colonies. Uh, we would normally do a simulation in class, but you won't get to see that. So um, you won't get to experience the anger and frustration, but maybe you can understand where they are coming from. The reason this is important for you to learn about is the issues they were upset about would be protected against in the Bill of Rights of our Constitution. And those, those same rights are still hotly debated and or defended today. Um, like the right to assembly, the right to protest, some of those things you're seeing right now, um, the right to elected representatives, the right to have guns, all of those kind of issues, um, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, these things are um, encoded in our Constitution and they come about because of this time frame. So at the end of the French and Indian War that you learned about, Britain is nearly completely bankrupt. They have nothing left in their treasury. Not only that, but they decide to tax the colonists to pay for that war, to replenish that treasury. And not only do they tax the colonists, but they, at the same exact time, they deny the colonists from moving west, the very land that the colonists were fighting for in the French and Indian War. Um, they're, they released the proclamation of 1763 which says, colonists, you can't move west anymore. You're causing too many fights, too many wars with the Native Americans, and it drug us into a war, and now we're bankrupt, so we don't want that to happen again. And one of the main reasons we fought the war was to defend you, so you have to help pay for it. The colonists, on the other hand, are like, we help fight the war, we also help pay for the war, and the whole reason was to get this land from your rival, the French, so now let us have it. So that's going to be the big fight between the two. So the reason this becomes a problem, these taxes, they had always existed. There had always been taxes on the colonists. There had always been um, certain rights that the colonists didn't have. But the British practiced a policy called salutary neglect. So let's look at what those words mean. Salutary means like helpful or beneficial, like good for you. And neglect, of course, is to ignore. So they... Parliament willingly pursued this policy where they ignored the fact that the colonists didn't obey the laws, didn't pay the taxes, um, traded how they wanted. And the reason that they left this alone um, was to benefit the colonists. They thought that the colonies would flourish without it. So, for example, there had been the Navigation Acts of 1651, and this is a classic um, example of mercantilism, which you learned about in our escape room game. Um, you have to give England the home country control over American trade so that they can keep all that money. So they had passed these navigation acts, and you can see what that was. Some of those things like all shipping had to be done in English ships. All products had to be sold only to England that were made in the colonies. And if anything came into the colonies from Europe, it had to pass through English, English ports. Well, why is that important? Well, because if it goes through English ports, then they can have control over taxing it. They can also be the ones who are getting paid to ship it. Think about our trucking industry in America and all the goods that are moving around the country from Amazon. Whoever controls the trucks, whoever gets the paid to ship things, that's a lot of money that they're getting to make. And so England wanted control over all those. Um, but... The problem is smugglers ignore this, and one of the most famous and successful smugglers lived in Boston, and his name was John Hancock, who you may know is one of the most prominent signers of the Declaration of Independence. So, again, salutary neglect. Prime Minister Robert Walpole, he um, summarized this pretty well. He said, if there's no restrictions placed on the colonies, they're going to flourish. They will be rich, and they'll make us money. So they kind of ignored these laws for a long time. However, after the French and Indian War, now they're bankrupt, so they can't ignore the laws. They're going to enforce them on the Americans. So here's some examples, some little memes about salutary neglect and what they mean. Meh, do whatever you want. There's law, but hey, we, we understand you're going to ignore it. And of course, once they try to enforce the salutary neglect, that's going to lead to the fighting. 
So again, this is British Britain's par British Parliament's policy of not strictly enforcing trade regulations and taxes so that colonies might flourish on their own. Again, from our escape room, you may remember laissez-faire, also from the Enlightenment with Adam Smith. This is uh, the government approach of staying hands off of business, let business do its own thing, and then business will flourish. There's several taxes, and you will look at this on another um, chart that has been handed passed out to you on Google Classroom and you can um, you have this to reference so I'm just gonna highlight a, a few of them of course the proclamation of 1763 is what angers the colonists a great deal because they can't get that land but then they, the British also placed new taxes on the colonists now they taxed these things some of them in Britain as well and actually the British people paid way more for the taxes than the American colonists but the American colonists will have a, a particular reason to get upset about, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Just remember that um, the, the, the American colonists have an, a special reason to be upset. So the Sugar Act is not just a tax on sugar, but it's also any kind of like sweetener like molasses. And now also, this is important, we're going to punish smugglers. The British are going to start to punish smugglers for smuggling. So they're going to actually enforce the laws now. This one was very unpopular, the Quartering Act. British troops would be stationed in your house. Uh, many uh, male citizens were worried about what was going on on their house when they weren't there and their wives were home alone. And many women feared assault and attack being home alone with these British soldiers who at the time, um, yeah, they're professional soldiers, but back then it was very different. Many of them were recruited from Britain, British prisons. It's like you can go to prison or you can join the army. So these are not necessarily nice dudes in your home while you're away at work um, and for ladies you're usually at home with them stamp act uh, required all legal and commercial documents to have a stamp on it that the the British would tax so your diplomas any contracts any kind of newspaper everything had a, a particular stamp there's not a posted stamp it's like a special stamp that you had to get on the paper Later, the British will repeal, repeal that stamp tax, but then they'll pass a law that says, hey, we're still in charge here, basically, which the colonists kind of thumbed their nose at and laughed at, but the British are stating, like, hey, we're going to, like, continue to do this. Um, the Townsend Acts are very unpopular. They suspend New York's assembly. Imagine the state government, like the state Congress. They suspend it. They cancel it. They say the colonists can't um, meet there until they agree to have troops quartered in their homes. And they also place new taxes on them as well. The Tea Act is one you may be familiar with. They put a tax on English tea, or any tea coming into America. You had to buy it from the British East India Company, and it was more expensive in some cases. Other cases it wasn't, but it was just the fact that you had to buy it from the British. And many American colonists would protest this by buying coffee instead. And that's why most Americans drink coffee today, whereas British people still drink tea. Um, of course, you've heard of the Boston Tea Party, and if you haven't, that will be in an upcoming lesson. Finally, the Intolerable Acts, the Coercive Acts, British troops come into Boston. They basically put it under martial law for, for the Boston Tea Party. They ban committees of correspondence, people that were writing letters back and forth to coordinate, and they, they force the Quartering Act on the British people. I'm sorry, the Bo Bostonians, everybody pretty much in Massachusetts. The reason I said that the, Brit that the American colonists were particularly upset about these taxes because they're paying the same taxes as people and Britain are paying in many cases and paying less taxes than people in Britain was that they don't have representation in Parliament. Imagine if Pennsylvania didn't have a representative in Congress. That's the way it was for American colonists at this time. The colonies um, did not have representation in Parliament. So the colonists said that taxes were unfair because they didn't have their own representatives. Elected representation was a right of all Englishmen. It was codified into English laws going back to the Magna Carta. And they believe that they had this same right. Hey, we live in America, but we're still Englishmen. We still have this same right. Parliament said, oh, don't worry about it. You're a part of the British Empire. And because you're a part of the British Empire, we still represent you. Of course, this is silly. This would be like saying somebody from um, Pennsylvania could represent everything that a person in Hawaii wanted. Okay, Hawaii, you don't need congressmen. We've got you. It's not fair, it's not going to be true representation, and they are going to be ready to fight and rebel, and this is going to start the process of going to war. I hope this helped. Um, you can feel free to email me with any questions and uh, any feedback that you have.